What's up guys, for my next example game, I thought I would make Connect 4, and that's because we did Tic-Tac-Toe, we did 2048, and those are both uh, grid, where you take turns putting some stuff in there, and every turn it maybe moves, maybe checks, maybe sees if it's full, stuff like that, and Connect 4 is really similar. I thought we can just reuse that code and add like one new thing and it's gonna be fine. And the way I'm starting this, which by the way means this is gonna be a lot shorter and it's gonna be fewer steps than those because we already did the work. Um, the way I started this was, like I've started the last few, just open up a doc and type some notes, type some comments that are just, what do we think? This is the main loop that's like, hey, every turn we're gonna get an input, show some stuff, make some changes, see if we have another turn. Absolutely the same as before. But then I was thinking, okay, we'll probably take code from tic-tac-toe for the switching turns thing, because it's two-player, 2048 is not. But everything else is mostly from 2048. I was thinking maybe we do um, column row instead of row column, and that's for two reasons. One is that I try to think in X, Y, like math class, but the list of lists that we have been doing is not that. It's you find the row, and then you find how far you go, which is Y, X, and it's a little tricky for my brain. I don't know if it is for you. I also thought it'd be like that because if you're dropping down, columns are the important thing in Connect 4, so it might be more vertical focused. Turns out I didn't do that, but it was a good thought. I was thinking maybe we'd do the rotate because in 2048 I made the code to shift stuff one direction, and then instead of the other three we just rotate the board, which is easier. And for Connect 4, I ended up using that, or at least in my first draft, but it's probably not necessary. We could probably get around without it. And my guess, which turns out to be absolutely true, is that diagonals are going to be hard because you can't just say check the rows or check the columns or do the other way after a rotate. Uh, diagonals, how do you do that? Do you hard code, like check this and this and this, or do you give it a pattern to like start here and go this way and start here and go this way? Haven't done it quite yet. But let's take a look at what I have done, which is all the easy stuff. And since I already made those other games, the easy stuff is just copying it over and changing a tiny bit, like making the instructions in there. Or when we check to see if we're stuck, we just see if the top of a column is full. And if the top is full, then that must mean we're stuck, if the other functions are working, right? So here's what we got. If we run it, we see I've got all the basics of uh, showing whose turn it is, we get an input, and you can stack them, you can put some on the side, you can do that, and let's show what happens if you fill the column, it tells you it's full. If you win, let's win, let's have, uh, O get four in a row here. If O goes in four, and then X goes somewhere, and then O is gonna go on Boom, O wins, and it gets that. It can also get if you win vertically, and the way it does that is by rotating the board, as we did in 2048. I didn't want to go like, when you're going in a row, it's easy, because a row is a list within the list of lists, but when you're hopping from one row to another, sometimes it's hard, not always. Like this is hopping from one row to another, and it turns out that it was fine. This when you drop a piece, it falls due to gravity. And this is the same as my 2048 when you shift due to pushing a direction. All it says is, look at a guy. If the next guy is blank, they switch. And the way to switch stuff in Python is incredibly, wonderfully easy. You just say x comma y equals y comma x. In other languages, it's not that nice. So what are we missing? We are missing the hard part, which is the diagonals. Diagonals are going to be something we got to think about, because I could write, okay, check this, check this, check this, check this, and that would be horrible. It would like double the lines we have. I got to think of some more efficient way that can be readable, that can be changeable. If we make the board bigger, then it would like adjust, and it's just make the computer do the work instead of making us do the work. That's always what the goal is. However, everything else is really nice. The only thing I added, the only thing that's like not stolen from one of the other games, uh, I changed the git move thing because you have to make it fit all the criteria we need it to be. 
a number in the range and not full, you know. Uh, but this is relatively thin. It's not a huge block of code. And uh, the only thing I added was when you're checking in tic-tac-toe if somebody wins, you can just say, like, if this whole row is X or if this whole column is Y or O, right? But in Connect 4, you win with part of it. You win with, like, a sum of the middle of the row is 4, but you still have some other stuff on the sides or some of the middle of the column. Maybe you had an X at the bottom, but then you have four O's and then another blank on top or whatever. So you can't just say if this row, the whole thing is O or the whole thing is X. By the way, I used X and O because in the real Connect Four, it's yellow and red. But if you try to have um, capital Y and capital R, they look too similar. It's hard to tell. And if you try to have lowercase Y, then it's sticking under and it looks weird. So I used X and O. The... Um, strings can do what we need. If you're checking to see if like four O's are in a string, that's easy. You just say in. If you're checking to see if four X's are in a string, you just say in. So all I did was add this thing to convert it to a string or to make a new string, not change the one that's there, but to make a new thing that's a string version of the row and say is turn, meaning whose turn it is, like X or O, is that times four in there? And if so, they win. And then to do the verticals, it would be hard to jump from one row to another, so we rotate the board, and then we see if that's in there. That's beautiful. I kind of like that code. I don't like that this is repeating, like these three lines are here and here. Maybe there's a way to write those three lines once, you know? Um, and then we check diagonals. I don't know how I'm going to do that, because I am instantly horrified by, like, writing a million lines. I want to do it in a more efficient way, but we'll think about it. The good stuff here is that we're almost done. Like this would be the fourth step of my 2048 or something because it took a while to build up and get everything nicely organized. But this is fine. I might have made a typo somewhere, but otherwise um, we just have one more step and we're done and I'll finish it tomorrow. And the point is once you get some things going, you're really... Uh, boosted for the next one. Like when we do graphics stuff later, um, little circles and squares on the screen, we can make Pong. And then once we've made Pong, we can make Breakout really easily by just moving stuff around. If we started with Breakout, it would be a lot. But if you build up, then you're fine. If you make 2048 and then Connect 4, well, you've already done most of the work and it's just rearranging some parts. So that's a nice example of how it gets easier, even though the game is not really easier to make. They're about equally complex, I think, unless this diagonal thing turns out to be super hard.